a massive welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I'm talking Club Path. Club Path is still, without doubt, the most misunderstood area of the golf swing that I see beginners through to very, very, very accomplished golfers. If we understand what affects club path, we might stop thinking about changing club path. Today, I've got a really special drill that's gonna give you masses of insight into controlling the club path. What I want you to picture, and I've got the help of an overhead cam today, to give you a very different perspective on this golf swing. Learning is about imagination, is about opening the doorways of your vision, your imagination of what I'm trying to put across. Information sure is power, but communicating it and making you visualize it is, is really where the real art is. And hopefully the, the view above is gonna really open your eyes. Club path, as we've talked about in a few videos before, is the point at which the golf club strikes the golf ball. And principally, this is the arc that the club head is swinging around the golf ball. There is absolutely no inside out. There is outside in, but there should not be an inside out. The circle is just simply the orientated to the right or orientated to the left. But really what I wanted to talk to you about today is this circle that I've drawn with these golf balls here, controlling where that circle is. So this drill that I'm gonna show you in a little while will make you feel like it either controls the arc of the golf swing in one of these three arcs. And what this will principally do is enable you to get the club approaching more from the inside. That's really what this video is about, creating an inside path, because that's the one that everyone is fighting. When I set up to that golf ball, the middle one of the three, because we've got three arcs here, this is the inside arc, this is the outside arc, and this is the straight arc for the purposes of this video. When I set up to the golf ball, as I make the backswing, the contact point or the pivot point of this swing comes from the base of my spine, which will influence the lion's share of where the outermost point of the club head will come back to. So when I make a backswing and then I move the pressure back into the heels of my feet and I were to return, the golf club would want to swing and hit this inside arc. I go back to my address position, I go up to the top, I now swing down and go to the balls of my feet. Now what starts to happen is that the arc get pu gets pushed away from us. Now what happens in a golf swing is that track man and most radars will measure this point, and it's that point that golfers will be more interested in influenced. Because if someone's trying to swing the golf club from the inside, they're only really interested in how they approach the golf ball, which is this sector of the golf swing. They are interested in getting the club away, but if they haven't got the golf club from the inside and they start swinging away, they would miss the golf ball, wouldn't they? Because if the club was out here in delivery, if the club was out here in delivery and then they tried to swing out uh, to the outside, they'd miss the golf ball. So really a golfer is only interested in 
getting the golf club inside. So understanding then, if I can get the handle and my pivot back of where it started or felt like it started, it would start to make me feel like the path of the golf club would start to work more from the inside. 5.8. If a golfer started to come away and onto the toes and then started to swing on the outside of the arc, you can see the club path is now outside in. So the pressures that we feel through our feet, too much on the toes, too much on the heels, will ultimately affect where the pelvis lays and sits in a golf swing. So as I start to pull the golf club down, if I start to feel the pressures more through the heels of the feet, as I say, it will start to make the golf club work more from the inside. But of course, like I've mentioned in so many videos, if the face angle is all to cock, and I make that downswing, and I start to get pressure more into the heels, and the face is open, and I make the same path, I approach it more from the inside. Look where the golf ball goes, which is why if you've ever been instructed to swing from the inside in any golf lesson, you should immediately put your club back in your golf bag, walk out of the door and go down the road for another one from somewhere else because you should absolutely not try to mechanically change the path of the golf club to swing from the inside because it absolutely does not work that way. You need to think about the pressures in the handle, the pressures through the feet that are going to spin you around the golf ball to make the path approach from the right direction. Now I've got a drill for you. Let me show you. The Swiss ball is a really undervalued bit of kit for any golf coach. I've done a few videos on it. Go check those out. It really allows us to mobilize the lower half and give someone the sensation of how they should use the middle of their body. With the Swiss ball, as I've referenced with the, with the three arcs, it really gives us an opportunity to anchor, and uh, I don't like the word anchor in any dynamic movement, but for the, for the purposes of this drill, it really keeps my backside in the same spot. The Swiss ball is rotating, so it's absolutely not anchoring it in terms of mobility, but it is allowing me to feel hip rotation, hip rotation, and keeping, from what you can see on the top of the screen here, keeping that spot in the same place as I make a golf swing. Then what it allows me to do is start to put pressure on the handle underneath my shoulders because the Swiss ball keeps me in forward bend. And as soon as it keeps me in forward bend, it now allows me to arc the club head in and in. So as I roll the Swiss ball back towards the projector screen, pull on the handle and roll it away from the projector screen, it's allowing me to stay in my forward bend. And when it allows me to stay in my forward bend, it continues to allow me to put pressure and force on the handle to square the face up. And it allows me to continue to move around. Now, the minute a golfer would want to put the club head over here because the face is open, the golf ball, Excuse me. The golf ball going to the right would then want to suck the golfer off of the Swiss ball. So the minute the ball pops off over there, because the club approaches from the inside with an open face, which would hit it over my golf bag, I would then start to 
try and come out and across it and hit that outside in path. The Swiss ball, as I say, keeps the arc from in to in. I'm now going to go back on the mat and show you a thing or two. Coming back to the golf ball with the Swiss ball now in mind. When I'm delivering the golf club and I'm using the pressures in my feet, and if you haven't checked out, you must pull my golf club video, which is up in the corner. It's really relevant that when we're pulling on the golf club and we're using the pressures in the feet, as I'm using the pressures in my feet, toe to heel, toe to heel, that's facilitating the pressure in the Swiss ball because as I'm in the heel of my right foot, I'm pushing into the Swiss ball. Then I'm into the heel of my left foot, I'm pushing into the Swiss ball. So when I'm in my backswing and I've got some right hip action, press into the Swiss ball, as I start to pull the club down and I start to work the pressure from toe to heel and I've still got some force going back into the Swiss ball, it keeps me inside or more bias towards this inside track by squeezing the Swiss ball more, which keeps the path tracking from the inside. 7.8 in, seven degrees of down. Of course, the more I'm squeezing that Swiss ball, the more it's pulling me over, the more it's allowing me to put force and pressure on the handle, the more it gives me the opportunity to make an attack angle that keeps on going down and down and down. And I'm not thinking about bloody Sharflene. <laughs> so the pressure through my feet that is spinning my pelvis around, that is keeping me inside the golf ball, is allowing me to just modulate where the face angle is to dictate the bend and the shot that I want to see in the sky. So when I hit golf shots in, on the TV here and I'm moving around the ball, I'm using my feet and the pressures through my feet to change where the club path arrives. When I pull on the golf club, if I hold the pressure into my left foot for longer, I pull on the club, I hold it into my pressure on my left toe for longer, the club path would swing more from the inside. If I got rid of the pressure off my toe earlier and pushed it back into my heel earlier, now all of a sudden the club path would be straighter And all I'm doing is starting to match up a club face angle in my grip, in my good grip, that's going to allow me to start to blend the two together to hopefully hit straight shots. I hope you can see this golf swing through what it is and not this inside out, outside in pump the arms, re release the face over the toe and all. It's nonsense. Everybody's trying the best to make everybody play well and I'm here to help the golf coaches, the golfers in the world, to play the very best golf that you deserve. I think you'll find that's good golf coaching. I look forward to seeing you. <laughs>